welcome, welcome to episode 19, season 6 of my epic trek solo backpacking through 10 countries over 16 months in 2018 and 2019. I had a mission and the mission was to see if I could travel and live overseas on an Australian aged pension and I did it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, it was a heck of a lot of fun and to prove that limited funds do not have to limit your dreams. Now, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> thank you for joining me today. I am wearing my earrings from Thailand. Do you like them? These cost me the equivalent of 35 Australian dollars and of course one always has to get oneself a tie-dye dress when in any part of Asia. I have a really exciting video that I've gone to a lot of trouble to highlight the best parts of my time in Thailand in Hua Hin. This video I'm about to show you right now. I hope that you Enjoy it! Season 6, Episode 19, Thailand is hot. Flew down from the Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris to Bangkok. Took 13 hours, went direct. Thank goodness I didn't do the other two opportunities, which were to go via Moscow or Beijing and thank goodness I didn't even though they were half the price of my Thai Airways flight. There are just some times when you have to go direct regardless of the money it costs you. When I landed in Bangkok, took the taxi, cost me 80 Australian dollars to Hua Kin, arrived on the 3rd of October 2019. How pretty are the Thai buildings? Look at this one. And here we have their railway station, re reported to be the prettiest railway station in all of Thailand. So why am I in Thailand? Because of these cute little critters. May I introduce to you two rescue dogs. Fiona is lying on the floor and Gracie is lying, looking up, keeping an eye on this absolutely crazy Australian woman. What is she up to? Across from where I lived in Hua Hin was this incredible place. Imagine holding your party there out in the middle of this beautiful lily pond. Did you notice the elephants? Beyond the elephants, just behind those palm trees, is a rather amazing tree house. And I can share with you that I am invited to spend time there any time that I want to. Let's have a look at this interesting little... Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? Having that crocodile like that as though it's really swimming through the water. Now, this place is called Chomdong. It's, uh, it used to be a royal residence. And these guys that live here now have this amazing fascination with many things. They've got peacocks roaming, beautiful flowers. One of their areas is called the Secret Garden. It's truly a sight to see and they love their grand pianos. They've got a grand piano with as a waterfall, water gushing out. It looks pretty amazing. Look at this beautiful piano. <laughs> if you happen to be a piano teacher, uh, you may be shuddering right now. Here is the absolute wonderful woman, Pasherin, who and her husband were very kind to me and uh, invited me over and I said, well, what can I drag out of my backpack? 
and luckily I was able to grab some of the local flowers. Where I lived in Hua Hin was unfortunately not as close to the water as I thought it would be. I had to walk quite a way and that meant going past this very, very pretty Shiva which is an Indian restaurant which looked totally magnificent in the daytime too. I loved all of the flowers, the culture, everything, well nearly everything was so vibrant. On my walk down to Hua Hin Beach, I passed by the Hua Hin Reggae Bar. <laughs> this was a pretty, pretty cool place and as I kept walking as the motorbikes would go past and the cars and the trucks and the dust and all of that happening I just had to stop and take time out in patties. This delicious coffee and equally delicious slice of torta cake cost a whole $6 Australian on the way to Hua Hin Beach, which, by the way, was a disappointment. The water didn't change much from being brown. Apparently, it's not like that all the year, but I certainly caught it where it was not exciting. This is just a little bit up from the beach, and the water here is green, but it is still so picturesque beautiful breeze here and just here was where I decided would be my Hua Hin office. By the way did I mention how fabulous the internet is in Thailand? Puts Australia to shame! Oh dear but I have gone on about that in other live streams of my epic trek. I met some wonderful, wonderful people in Hua Hin. It was its savings grace, I must say. And this is one of those wonderful persons. This is Kelly. Kelly's an American who was visiting Hua Hin and she owns an apartment in Albany, in Sorende. I had been invited to go there anytime I want. I think that's just incredible. Thank you, Kelly. From here, you walk around the small headland and you get to the beach. Have a look at this. Smoking on the beach is prohibited by Thai law. Fine of 100,000 baht, which is about $4,537.09 Australian dollars, or imprisonment for one year for any violation. Crikey! <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't smoke. I kept walking up the beach and came to this really, really gorgeous location. I'm not even going to try and pronounce what this is. The water up this end was beautiful. It was such a peaceful day walking through not a care in the world and noticing this beautiful golden Buddha. By the way this place is also known as Monkey Mountain and you're going to find out why in just a minute but I thought I'd do my best to get an image of the golden Buddha a bit close up for you. Lots of bullas, uh, bullas, Lots of Buddhas in Thailand and every single one of them majestic. Why is it called Monkey Mountain? Well, when you climb up to the top of that hill, it's not really a mountain, but when you climb up there, this is what you'll see on the other side. Hordes of monkeys. Now, I like animals. I will say I am not a fan of tons and tons of monkeys, especially when they realize that you have some food and there's no way I would buy any food from any of the vendors there, not like other people were. I've seen too often how that can be a problem. I took this image and I turned around and look at this beautiful 
image. This is one of my favorite shots. Mind you, so many favorite shots. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I think I've got at least 30 now. Another thing I love about Thailand are the festivals. They, with these flowers, they create the most amazing things. In Hua Hin is a big shopping center. There are a couple of them. This, the one where this was, it was called, is called Blue Port. I went to the movies there. They have a lovely food court there. A really good spot to go in right next to it was an incredible place to have a massage and that cost me a whole, oh, I think it was $18 for an hour massage. Not bad. As part of this festival, we saw this. Now have a look at this. Lady men, lady girls, lady ladies. And the theme is recycle and reuse and if you had a really good look at what they're wearing you'll see it's an extremely clever use of material that more than likely would have been thrown away. Now I have to take advantage of the opportunity to stand in front of wings. This is all part of the festival and I just loved these wings. Looks pretty cute huh? Now, just around from where I showed you was my Hua Hin office is this. It's, there's rather a really upmarket resort here. And on this night, they were having this rather incredible buffet dinner. One of the things I loved about Hua Hin, and sadly there weren't too many, but one of the things was that I had a driver and I could organize for him to come and pick me up. He's a very safe young man. And uh, so therefore I could go out at night because one of the issues is that when you're traveling solo and you're going to as many places as I did, it wasn't often that I would go out at night as a solo woman but see up there see right up the top so I walked around the headland from my Hua Hin office and just paused because I looked down and saw all of this magnificence and yet someone very kindly took my photo met a lot of people in Hua Hin and not all of them of course were expats. I met some really really lovely Thai people. Patty, I'm sure that's not her real name, had that wonderful cafe where I bought that uh, cake that I showed you already and had that delicious coffee. And here's another wonderful Thai woman. To the left is my friend Chani and her son and then in the purple top is Chani's friend. Now Chani very kindly offered to take me to one of the caves that weren't that far to drive to. There were two to choose from. I'm so glad that I chose this cave. What a feast for the eyes. I was a little concerned going there once we got out the car and walked down the steep stairs because TripAdvisor can be really, really good to get an idea of other people's experiences. You certainly have to take some of them with a pinch of salt. A couple of the comments, though, were about how people had been attacked, I guess is the word, by the monkeys that were here. Luckily, when I turned up or when we turned up, there was a person there who was feeding all the monkeys. So they were all gathered around this woman who was a local and they weren't bothering us as we descended down into this incredible cavern. Very lucky on this day because look at these uh, beautiful monks in their gorgeous orange saffron robes. They were filming a documentary, so it was rather special to be there and listen to them and watch what they were doing. One of the 
very special parts of being in this cave is this lying down Buddha. You can see that guy's shadow in the front, which will help you understand just how big this lying down Buddha is. I could show you so many photos of this cave. It was enchanting, soothing, peaceful, very special. Recommend that if you ever are in Hua Hin, that you, and you can only go to one cave, this is the cave to visit. Let's go back to another Buddha. This one is quite famous. So at this temple, people call this one the fat black or the big black Buddha. There's not an awful lot here. However, it is still another part of Thailand. And if you wanted to, you could do a rather a clever thing by having a photo taken and kind of looking like you're holding the Buddha up. I don't think I'm fooling anyone though. On the other side of Monkey Mountain is this resort, beautiful resort. One of the friends that I made there took me to this resort and we attended a lunch to support animal rescue over in Hua Hin. And here she is, this is Elaine. And I also want to show you my host, the woman that um, took in the two street dogs that I showed you at the beginning, Sophie and Gracie. And oh, honestly, uh, this woman, sorry, Fiona and Gracie, this woman, Natalie, is an angel. She has a deep, deep caring for the temple dogs and cats, anyone who's injured. And she does her absolute best to look after them. And talking about friends, and here we are. You have to go to a cooking class when you're in Thailand, right? You can see Kelly on the left there. And there's Elaine standing next to me. And there's a couple of other people there as well. This was where I discovered Masaman curry. Oh, it was delicious. And I've cooked it once since, but strangely, it wasn't as good as when I cooked it there. I can have no understanding why that would be the case. Talking about food, it was fascinating in the supermarkets there. Have a look at this Australian food, organic, and notice how every single little piece, every single capsicum, everything is wrapped up in plastic. Now, don't forget, this is in November 2019. So, or was it October? But anyway, it's towards the end of 2019. Not a hint of COVID was happening then. Now, having a look at all of this Australian food, there was so much of it. And then to my horror, I saw this sign. I thought, I hope that is not really fried platypus. Let's hope that that's just a mistranslation. However, if you wanted to try the other local delicacies, all of the insects and worms and grubs, you can go for your life and eat as much as you want and pretty cheaply too. Talking about eating, when I was in Hua Hin, I got bitten by a dog. It was a scary occasion. I don't like being bitten by a dog. The dog bit me right up on my thigh and uh, he's a big black dog the street dogs there were a problem and it was sometimes I just didn't want to go out because it meant that I had to walk by not just the street dogs a lot of the people in that street had their dogs and they weren't always friendly either so if it's not the monkeys if it's not the dogs <laughs> There are other things like all of the insects, the mosquitoes and so on. But there's also this thing starting with an S called a snake. And Fiona and Gracie noticed the snake first. Uh, thankfully, it's not a big one. 
It's not anywhere near as big as the uh, person who pet sat these guys before me showed you showed me the video of that snake, which was at least three times longer than this snake. So therefore, never ever once did I sit out on in the courtyard uh, on the chairs knowing that the snakes were there. Oh, and by the way, that's what can happen is you're walking up under the tree and you a snake will drop on top of you. It, look, it's a little green snake, nothing to worry about, but... <laughs> All I can say is goodbye, Hua Hin. Goodbye, I am never, ever coming back. <laughs> so people say to me, oh, surely you, you're coming back. Because I did meet some really, truly wonderful people there. But, you know, I'm not going to. Because there are so many other places in the world to go when we can go. I had in, an invite from Kelly in Albania, not Albany, Albania. I have uh, an invite to go to Germany. I can go back to Spain. I can go to the UK. I can go back to Turkey. I have these wonderful invites to go anywhere in these places in the world. So why would I go back to Hua Hin? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my episode today. Oh, I know, I know, Jen, never say never. Well, that's true. And and there is that uh, just out of this world treehouse that those wonderful, wonderful people at Chomdong Villa have said I can stay there anytime I like. It was just the best ever treehouse, so luxurious. But even then, I'm never going back. Have I made myself clear? <laughs> I hope you are enjoying season six, all about my travels through the 10 countries. I have one more, just one more country to go. And so next week will be the last episode of season six. And we're going to take a little rest until the start of 2021, which will be a better year, won't it? <laughs> better in so many ways. And, uh, and one of the main ones for me is the, the ability to travel. As I always do at the end of every single episode is to give you guys a heart key. So this heart key is the way that you can create a remarkable life of absolute joy, astonishing joy. Oh no, Sylvia, yes, you missed most of my talk, but never fear, there will be a replay thank you for coming in anyway you are just in time for my heart key and here it is for today be better now i'm not talking about what some guru or other person authority figure whomever in your life or someone you treat as an authority figure is telling you you need to do no i am asking you to have a look at your life and to decide every single day what can i do that will make my life better today what can i how can i be better and it doesn't have to be a big thing guys as some of you know, I have put on some weight. I have been calling it COVID coverage, but I've realized I've just been using that as an excuse. <laughs> Many of the countries that I traveled to ate a high sugar diet, especially in the morning with their croissants and, and the scrolls and all of those things. And it wasn't much else available, strangely, or perhaps I just wasn't looking. <laughs> regardless of the reason I am now having a look at okay how can I be a better I'm showing you this I'm fessing up for one thing 
and it's not about those big steps it's taking the small steps you know those little micro steps the baby steps that will lead to your life being better so I'm about to share with you one of my steps and I make this vow in front of you all yesterday <laughs> I went to the shops and I saw these oh here we go here we go oh you probably can't read that free from gluten mint creme biscuits and gluten-free uh, no preservatives no artificial colors you know what I do I'm just going to get this I'm just going to get this uh, and because I do rather like chocolate biscuits and I'll just eat one or two not true I ate the whole packet in one go <sighs> so how can I be better today and tomorrow and the next day I say to you I will be better because I will not eat the chocolate biscuits. How can I lose weight if I devour a whole packet of chocolate biscuits? Now, there are other ways that you can be better in your life. Small steps. Perhaps you decide you'll get up even 15 minutes earlier in the day and do something that you've been putting off. What is it that you will decide to do that will help you create a life, that will help you be better? As a matter of fact, any emails that I send out, the uh, greeting or the farewell message is be better. It can be phoning someone or sending them a message, reaching out to people because what's going on in the world has been incredibly isolating. So be better. How are you going to do that? Thank you so much for joining me today. One more episode in season six. <sighs> Can you remember which country it is? You're going to find out next week. Bye.